Hello everyone, and welcome to another Invasive Species video, where today we're going to be talking about Norway maple again, for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that it's quite a bit later in the season, and when I did my original Norway maple video, it was quite early, which was good for the identification I wanted to do, but you can't always pick what time you find these species. And this is just as good as time as any to identify this species because of the large leaves. Apparently this is larger than any other native maple species. The leaves won't all be of the same size, but there should be some pretty big ones intermixed with all the other sized leaves. And the shape is going to be much more identifiable once they're this big. In addition, when I did the first video, my sources were quite poor as to whether the identifiable milky sap was just something that happens when the plant is getting its first leaves, or is it still identifiable when the plant matures? And I'm happy to say, once the leaves are mature, they still have the milky sap, which can distinguish them from native species. The second reason is that I found a sugar maple tree, which is the hardest to differentiate from Norway maple. And now I can show you guys what they look like side by side. So here's a side by side of the two. Now I wouldn't go too much on color or size because that can vary from leaf to leaf, tree to tree, region to region. But you'll notice that this leaf has a very much different shape. It's hard to say that it has more defined lobes. One, two, three, four, five because this one also has five lobes, but the lobes are much more prominent on the Norway maple leaf. Here's a much more difficult comparison as some of the younger leaves on these Norway maple trees are going to look very similar to sugar maple. That's why the milky sap is such a good identifier because compared to sugar maple leaves, the Norway maple leaves can look very similar. And the third reason I wanted to talk about this was, well, there's been a bit of a change of plans. In the first video, I talked about how I wanted to get rid of these as soon as possible. And despite these being an invasive species, I really don't think that's a good idea. And I wanted to explain why. Now, the main reason I'll get to in a second, but there are some auxiliary concerns that I wanted to talk about that aren't too much of a problem for me. So first of all, this is still a tree, and it spent a lot of energy storing carbon in its wood. If you cut it down and just let the wood rot, the carbon goes right back into the atmosphere where it was previously taken out. So what I plan to do with these is cut them into boards and do some nice woodworking with them. I mean, look at that nice flat surface that you can cut boards out of. But that's less of a problem for me, but certainly a consideration for anyone else, it was one of the reasons I didn't cut them out sooner was because I wanted to make sure I had the woodworking knowledge and tools to make use of this in a way that is environmentally positive. And the second auxiliary reason to wait is the fact that, well, you actually have to cut the things down. And that can present a few problems. First of all, either you do it yourself, in which case you're putting a risk to yourself, Personally, I've done it with hand tools before, never with a chainsaw. That way you don't overcut. You're in far more precise control. It's safer that way. Plus, it's quite a bit of good exercise. And if you don't do that and you get someone else to do it for you, well, who's to say they're going to save these catalpa trees? The tree has to fall somewhere, and it's probably going to do a decent amount of collateral damage on the way down. You can work to minimize that, but that takes time and effort. And for a business that's working on a time-money basis, they might not put that effort and time in to make sure that these catalpa trees undertake as little damage as possible. But the main reason that I want to wait on cutting at least some of these trees down is that in terms of invasive species, there's bigger fish to fry. With the exception of a couple saplings, and one or two Norway maple trees that are under 10 foot tall that could easily be taken out by clippers. These are the only Norway maple trees on the property. That makes them one of the least common trees on the property. 
And these ones haven't really even grown to full canopy height yet. So while these trees are introduced and have the potential to be invasive and may very well spread seeds to other places that may become a problem, right here they're really not that much of a problem. Except maybe to these two poor catalpa trees that are getting leaned on. I will take these trees out eventually, but right now they're serving a purpose as a shade tree, which is keeping stuff like this multiflora rose in check. Quite bluntly, I don't need another clearing that multiflora rose is just going to grow in and that I have to manage, which will, I mean, even if I prioritize this spot, I will have to manage this at the detriment of managing other areas. So before I take these Norway maples out, I want to make sure that I've done a decent enough job controlling the populations of the more problematic invasive species. In fact, I'll probably want to have some nice native tree species healthy and ready to transplant into this area when I cut these down. The last thing I, and hopefully any sane person, would want to do is replace a Norway maple tree, which at the very least is performing the function of a tree by storing carbon in its wood, and replace it with a multiflora rose thicket, which is just a giant impassable thorn factory. So that about wraps it up. I hope the extra bit of identification and differentiation from sugar maple helped you guys. Admittedly, the differentiation between this and sugar maple is not easy. And luckily, this one has white sap. Otherwise, it would be very difficult to tell the two apart. And I hope that last bit serves as a reminder to always think critically about what the consequences of an action will be, especially when it comes to removing plants. It's never a good idea to trade a minor nuisance for a severe one. And when it comes to invasive species, you should really prioritize the ones that are actively being a problem in your area. Well, I hope you guys learned something and enjoyed. See ya.